I'm back. Before we get into this episode, I just want to say I hope everyone's surviving and doing okay in lockdown. I know it's been tough for some folks, especially those who have lost their jobs or are dealing with mental health issues. Personally, it's been tough for me too. I live alone now and I can easily go days without seeing another human being. I'm doing my best not to go out unless I absolutely need stuff. I always mask up and use hand sanitizer. I'm being safe, but I miss being able to go out for coffee with friends or meet up at a bar for a beer. It's been a long year and it doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon but i want to let you all know i'm thinking about you and i'm sending good vibes your way we're going to get through this and we're all going to be better on the other side but with that out of the way let's talk about the atari st computer line the atari st line of computers were the successors to the atari 8-bit line of computers and the company's first 16 and 32-bit offerings the 520ST was the first to debut in 1985, and it's quite a bit more advanced than previous computers released by Atari. For one, it utilizes an operating system known as GIM, which stands for Graphics Environment Manager. It's the first graphical user interface that shipped with Atari computers, and it's very capable and user-friendly. Less than a year later, the 1040ST was released with a full 1 megabyte of memory for less than $1,000, a first for the time. You could buy the computers with a built-in or external 3.5-inch floppy drive and connect it to a high-resolution color or monochrome monitor. Other models of the ST were released, which include the STF or STFM in the model name. They stand for floppy and modulator, respectively. That indicates that the computer comes with a built-in floppy drive and RF modulator, which will allow the computer to connect to a television's RF connector. This particular computer is a 1040 STF, which means I have to connect it to a monitor, and these computers have a proprietary connector, so I can't just use any old CRT monitor. Luckily, mine came with one, and this picture looks amazing in person. It's a little hard to get across through a YouTube video, but in person, I think it shines. Because I have no way of capturing video from this computer, the best I can do is to film the screen directly, which is not ideal but at least you can see what the computer is capable of, even if the video quality is not the best. I should also mention that I took this unit apart and cleaned it because a couple of the keys were not registering. It turns out they were missing the rubber stopper underneath. Not much I could do about it, but I was able to at least clean out the disgusting amount of dust from inside the unit. I found it at a thrift store complete in the original box, but it looked like no one had used it in years when they decided to drop it off. I also replaced the 3.5 floppy drive with a GoTech drive, which allows me to load games directly off of a USB stick. Due to the age of this machine, many of the discs I have for it no longer load or have trouble loading. Not only is this convenient to have all of my games on one tiny drive, it also loads much faster than a traditional disc. Good stuff. One thing that I have to criticize about this particular model is the location of the controller and mouse ports. It's underneath the keyboard, which means you have to lift it up every time you want to connect a controller or mouse. Then you have the cable sticking out from underneath the damn thing. I hate it almost as much as I hate the Dreamcast controller with the cord coming out of the bottom. I know you could loop it to the top, but I still think it was a dumb design. Honestly, I would have preferred the ports to be on the back of the computer. With that brief overlook out of the way, the first game we're going to take a look at is a port of the Sega arcade game Alien Syndrome. Compared to the Commodore 64 version, this version is noticeably better graphically. The music, it's a bit more subjective. Some people prefer the SID chip, but I love the sound of the Atari ST. This port is much closer to the arcade game and plays pretty well. It's a solid game on any platform, but I like what the Atari ST version has to offer. Arkanoid 2 Revenge of Doe. Now here's a game I can lose myself in. This one's controlled with the Atari mouse and it's basically a clone of Breakout with some cool power-ups. Occasionally when you break a block, a power-up will drop down and it changes the game up. It could be multi-balls or the ability to shoot the blocks away while keeping the ball from going out of bounds. There's a bunch and it keeps the gameplay varied enough that I enjoy sticking with it. If you haven't played this one, I highly recommend it and this is a great version to play. Here's another one that I spent way too much time playing while I was recording for this episode. Rodland is a platform slash puzzle game. 
After a brief cutscene showing your mother being kidnapped by a gigantic bird, you start the game. You can't jump, but you can climb up and down ladders. The gameplay is basically you using your rod to catch and slam enemies into the ground repeatedly until they die. Sometimes they'll leave bombs that will explode and kill other enemies, but the objective is to either kill all of the enemies without them touching you, or collect all of the flowers in the stage before the timer runs out. I ended up beating this one. Cannon fodder is an interesting one. You control a squad of soldiers through a map filled with other enemy soldiers. One button will move your troops to a location and the other fires. To complete the stage, you just need to kill all the enemy soldiers and survive with at least one of your soldiers alive. It sounds simple, but there's actually a decent amount of strategy involved. You'll move between various terrains like jungle and ice, but it really doesn't affect gameplay at all. This is another one that I had a lot of fun with, although I had already played it on the 3DO and Atari Jaguar. I just think those versions are better, but this one's not a bad one to get if you have an Atari ST. Nothing quite encapsulates this era of computers more for me than Lemmings. It was so ubiquitous and released on just about everything back then, including the ST. I still think the best way to play Lemmings is with a mouse, and the Atari ST is perfectly suited for this. Lemmings is essentially a puzzle game where you're tasked with figuring out how to get your Lemmings to escape a level without too many dying. It's a classic, and I think it shines on this computer. Lastly, we have the LucasArts point-and-click adventure Maniac Mansion. My first exposure to this game was in the second grade back in 1987 in Gifted Class. I remember loading it up and playing it with some friends during a computer lab that we had at the end of each day. Eventually, we got to this part where there was a tepid curse word, something like hell or damn, something like that. I don't remember exactly which one, but one of the girls in the class immediately went and told the teacher upon seeing it, and then the teacher took the game away and we never got to beat it. I wouldn't play it again until a few years later when I got it on the NES. That's a great version too, but ideally this game should be played with a mouse, which makes it a perfect game to get for the Atari ST. There are multiple characters and multiple endings depending on the actions you choose and the characters you choose in your three-person party. Definitely check this one out if you've never played it before. Alright guys, that's it for episode 58 of Retro Buyer's Guide. As always, thanks for watching. If this is your first time watching this channel, be sure to like and subscribe to keep up with the latest videos. I'm planning new episodes, one upcoming on the PC Engine CD, and I plan to revisit the Atari Jaguar library, since the old video I did back on it six years ago didn't really have that many games featured in it. I've collected many of the ones recommended to me in comments at the time, and so I think it's finally time to give Atari's last console a fair shake. Alright, that's it. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and mask up. You'll see me soon again with a new video. Take care. Bye.